Hello. Today we'll be looking at the poem Sonnet to Science by Edgar Allan Poe. So Edgar Allan Poe, you might have heard of him. He's a very famous horror um, writer of writing short stories and also a few um, poems. Um, but the poem today is not a horror poem, sadly. It's a sonnet. Okay, so a sonnet is a special type of poem. It's only 14 lines and a sonnet presents a sort of argument or a question and then answers it in the last couple of lines okay so a sonnet is also very uh, characteristic of Shakespeare okay Shakespeare um, worked with a lot of sonnets and so Edgar Allan Poe here is sort of reflecting the style um, that Shakespeare would use okay so he uses a lot of language as well that is not actually characteristic of the time Edgar Allan Poe was writing, but he's reflecting the language of the past. Okay, so let's have a look at this poem. Science, true daughter of old time thou art, who alterest all things with thy peering eyes. Why prayest thou thus upon the poet's heart? Vulture, whose wings are dull realities, how should he love thee, or how deem thee wise, who wouldst not leave him in his wandering to seek for treasure in the jewelled skies, albeit he soared with an undaunted wing? Hast thou not dragged Diana from her car, and driven the hammer dryad from the wood to seek a shelter in some happier star? Hast thou not torn the naiad from her flood, the elfin from the green grass, and from me? The summer dream beneath the tamarind tree? So I think we all heard that I had a few small slip-ups as I was trying to say this poem because it's using a lot of language that I'm not used to and neither of you, right? So it's a bit of old, older style English here. So I'll try and um, almost translate what some of this is saying, okay? Um, so science, so this poem was written to science, okay? That's who it's addressed to. So science, true daughter of old time, thou art. So thou just means you, and art just means are. Okay, so science, the true daughter of old time, you are. Now he's calling science the daughter of time because time um, changes things, doesn't it? Okay, with time, things grow old, things die. Okay, and so that's why he's linking science with time because they both change things and make things decay. Okay, in, in um, Edgar Allan Poe's eyes, science does this, okay, makes things worse. So science alters things with its peering eyes. So things peering, it's not a nice way to describe science. Okay, and obviously science here is personified. Okay, so why science preys upon the poet's heart? Okay, so like a vulture, like a vulture, the science is preying on the heart, it's eating the heart. Because science has wings that are dull realities. Okay, so here a metaphor for the vulture or science um, is used to show that science is boring, basically a dull reality. Okay, it's not exciting. Um, so we can see here in these pictures of vultures, they don't look very nice, do they? Okay, they're not a pretty bright colored bird. Um, they're gray and quite brown and ugly. Okay, so it's saying science is like a vulture, okay, because it attacks the heart and also because its wings are boring and dull and reflect unexciting realities. Okay, how can one love science? Okay, how can one deem science as the smart thing to believe and to pursue? Because who would not leave him? So this is saying who wouldn't leave? So vulture and science won't leave someone when they're wandering to seek for treasure in the jeweled skies. Okay, so imagine uh, someone who doesn't believe in science. They're wanting to look into the sky and imagine what's up there. Okay, what's what angels? What beautiful beasts? What things hiding in the clouds? Okay. They want to look and see these treasures in the skies. But, albeit, so though, albeit means though, okay, because though the 
Vultures soar through the skies with undaunted wings. Okay, they're not afraid to fly through the sky and just ruin this um, person's imaginings of the sky. Okay, they're imagining these beautiful things, these beautiful unseen um, wonders, and bam, a boring old vulture flies through. Okay, think of so obviously this poem is written in a time long ago, hundred so years ago when new scientific discoveries were being made. Okay, and with these discoveries, people's um, fantastical ideas of the world were being denied. Okay, so think back to someone wondering, oh, how is the sky blue? How are the clouds made? And so on, and they can think of all these crazy ideas. But with science, they learn, oh, clouds are made from water vapor and blah, 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 and all of that stuff destroys their dreams. Okay, that's what this poet is talking about. So, continuing on, hast thou, so it means has, have you, have you not dragged Diana from her car? So Diana here is referring to um, Roman mythology. So Diana, I think, is Artemis in Greek mythology. And she would drive her chariot through the sky and that would um, carry the moon through the sky. Okay, that's what they believed in their mythology. But science has dragged Diana, Diana from her chariot because now we know that the moon moves around the earth because of gravity, okay? So, and another example of science destroying beautiful mythology is um, the science has driven the dryad from the wood. So here's the dryad. So these little tree spirits to seek a shelter and some happier star. Okay, so we've, we've driven her out of the wood. We know that she is not true, okay? They don't, we don't have dryads living in trees. These vultures have attacked that idea. Science has attacked that idea. Okay. Hast thou not torn the naiad from her flood? So naiad are water spirits, elves, green grass, so on. Okay. And from me, science has pulled me from the summer dream beneath the tamarind tree. Okay. So here, this is in this last two lines, we the poet's real message is revealed. Okay. We can see that science has driven um, our poet out from his dreams okay he wants to sit beneath a tree and dream about all the wonderful things that the world could um, have but science comes in and destroys all of that okay and so Paul has written this sonnet as a almost like a rant talking about how much the poet doesn't like science okay so obviously that's a different idea to what we all share now. Okay, we all know that with science we understand the world better and are able to create new technology and heal people. Okay, with medicine. Okay, and so on. We know science is beneficial for our world, but some people might like to think that um, imagination and art and so on is more beautiful. Okay, and science might um, impede upon that. So yeah, that's this poem. So thank you for listening and sticking through the whole video.